let's talk for a few minutes about the third market structure. We have perfect competition, monopolistic competition. Let's take a look at one version of the market structure called oligopoly. Oligarchy referring to a few. Oligarchy ruled by a few. Okay, this is oligopoly sales by a few sellers. So now we've changed our assumptions. There's still product differentiation from, from monopolistic competition. But now we have only a few sellers instead of a large number of small sellers. So let's say, let's say this is a town in a fairly isolated area where you only have four gas stations. Let's make them all located right at the same intersection across the street from each other. And those are the only gas stations for 100 miles. We're beginning to get a sense of what an oligopoly is. The buyers have very few sellers to choose from. And now, what's going to happen? And this is one view on what could happen. This can open up into discussions on game theory and some pretty interesting views on what will he do if I do this. But let's take it and keep it pretty simple right here. This is called a kinked demand oligopoly. We're going to see a demand curve with a kink in it right here, a break. It changes the slope. So here is our demand curve. And we don't exactly explain how we start here, but we say if this is what's going on in the market today, remember four gas stations, let's say each gas station is getting $4 per gallon for their gasoline. And each gas station is selling 1,000 gallons every day. Now, here's the key. What's going to happen for this company, this is company A or company number one, one of the four sellers, what's going to happen if this company raises their price, let's say up to $4.30 a gallon. What will happen? Well, think about the market. You've got four gas stations all across the street from each other. One of them goes up to $4.30. What would you do? I wouldn't go there. I'd go to the other three right here. I'd buy my gas cheaper across the street. So what's going to happen to this company and their sales? The answer is they're going to lose a lot of customers. Remember, we call that an elastic demand, a relatively small price increase causes a large decrease in the number of customers or the, the volume of sales. So we say that for an upward price change, this company faces a fairly elastic demand. In fact, this will move them up on their demand curve, I don't know, somewhere over here. So they'll see their sales drop quite a bit. They need a 600 gallon. That's a pretty, pretty good drop. So would the company want to raise price? And the answer is no. They'll just be pricing themselves out of the market and all their competitors will be laughing at them. And then we ask, well, what if this company decided to reduce their price and attract more customers? Normally we would say, hey, cool, that's, that's a, you know, a viable idea. When you reduce your price, you become more attractive, more people come into your business. But what would happen here? If this company dropped their price, let's say down to $3.50, What do you think their competitors would do? What would you do? If you own one of the other three stations, you walked out tomorrow and the other guy over there has dropped his price from $4 to $3.50 and he's got all kinds of customers, people lined up to buy gas over there and you don't have any. You don't have any customers. What would you do? Not rocket science, is it? You reduce your price to $3.50 also and so will the other two gas stations so you can bring your customers back. And now what's going on? All four of you sellers are sitting there staring at each other, selling for three fifty a gallon, and you haven't picked up very much business because nobody has a particular advantage over the other. So you may pick up a little bit more sales at three fifty. Okay, let's increase your sales out here, and now you're going to sell one thousand and fifty gallons a day. Was that a smart idea to drop your price? Not really. So when the first guy drops his price, what is he really going to incite or cause? He's going to cause a price war. All of his competitors are going to have a, a strong motivation to reduce their price as well. So now everybody's selling at a lower price without any real significant increase in sales. And there's a, there's a term for that in economics, isn't there? When you drop your price and you're not making much more in the way of sales and everybody else is doing that, we call that what? We call it stupid. So it's stupid to start a price war by dropping your price when you know your competitors are also going to drop their price and nobody's really, as sellers, nobody's really going to benefit. Now as consumers, of course, we love this. We love a price war. We love to see the sellers cutting each other's throats. 
but we're talking about this from the company's point of view. So what's going to happen here is that the price is basically going to stay where it is. Nobody wants to raise or lower their price, and they get into some pretty mean competition sometimes through what we call non-price competition. Lots of advertising, uh, lots of things to get people's attention. Maybe with our gas stations, when you pull into my gas station, you get, you get service. We go ahead and wash your windows and check your oil and we pump the gas for you. And then some guy across the street says, well, to compete, I'll have a little convenience store. So when you pull in, uh, I'll bring you out a cup of coffee and a couple of donuts or whatever. And, and that's the way the competition evolves. Again, to your and my benefit as consumers. But the companies are constantly looking for better ways to be more unique, more attractive than their competitors without getting into a price war or trying to change the price. All right? The interdependencies between the sellers, how each one depends on the other and what they do, is characteristic of oligopoly. If one company tries to reduce the price and cheat, it typically doesn't do them much good because everybody else can see it and will follow suit and everybody gets hurt. This is, this is common in... Uh, Cartels around the world, the uh, OPEC cartel back in the 70s, tried to do this kind of thing too, tried to set the price, and yet they had members of the cartel trying to cheat by lowering the price. And what it did was destroy the cohesiveness of the cartel to where everybody was bidding price down, and you had more competition and lower prices. Oligopoly, kinked demand oligopoly. Be familiar with the kinked demand curve and why price is pretty rigid, it's pretty constant.